So hey guys, welcome to Proton Stock. Today's topic is Kepler's laws of planetary motion. So let me walk you through a quick introduction and then we will see the three laws. So basically Kepler's laws are three astronomical laws that describe the motion of planets around its star. These three laws were given by uh, Johannes Kepler between 1609 and 1619. So Kepler published his first law and second law in his first book called Astronomia Nova in 1609. And he published his third law 10 years later in a book called Harmonicis Mundi. So um, it is said that uh, these three laws were derived uh, using lifetime observation of Tycho Brahe, who was basically the teacher or mentor of Johannes Kepler. So this is uh, a basic history of these Kepler's laws. Coming to the science of Kepler's laws, Kepler's law is one of the introductory topics in gravitation. Let's see first Kepler's law, which is also called as law of ellipsis. Let's see the statement first. The Kepler's first law statement says that planets orbit the sun in a path described as an ellipse with the sun at one of the two foci. Let's try to understand this. Uh, I hope that you all might be knowing about ellipse. So ellipse looks somewhat like this and if you take uh, a planet in this orbit then the sun is located either at this point or at this point so these two are basically called the foci of an ellipse okay got this point right so let's get into some more details of this law so I'm adding some additional points to this so first let me tell you about the equation of uh, uh, an ellipse so as I told you this is an ellipse and these two axes are called the major and minor axis of the ellipse so basically this horizontal one is the major axis and the vertical one is the minor axis of the ellipse then there is this thing half of the major axis is called semi major axis which who's uh, which is generally denoted by a and half of the minor axis uh, is semi minor axis which is generally denoted by B with this notation the equation of an ellipse comes to be x square by a square plus y square by b square is equal to 1 so this is the general form of an ellipse then there is a property of an ellipse called eccentricity denoted by E so this is equal to root of 1 minus b square by a square now you might be knowing that uh, you know ellipse comes when we uh, like press the circle a bit now this e denotes that level of pressing so if e is e ranges from 0 to 1 if e is 0 it's a circle and as e goes through uh, towards 1 it becomes flatter and flatter right so why am i telling all this so there is something called aphelion and perhelion so let me uh, explain that so if sun is here and the planet is here this position is called as aphelion the farthest position of the planet from the sun and if the planet is here then it is called perhelion perhelion is the closest position of the planet to the sun now if, if someone asks you what's the distance uh, of sun from the planet uh, at its aphelion position then it would be basically a plus a e how is it a plus a e so as i told you that this is a and this distance is basically a e in an ellipse uh, the semi major axis multiplied by its eccentricity so at the aphelion position this is the distance between the planet and the sun and at the perihelion distance as you can see perihelion uh, position it's a minus a e right so, so these uh, i wanted to tell these two points so another point i wanted to tell you in this law the last point is that uh, the eccentricity of planets in our solar system is really really low uh, which for example the eccentricity of earth's orbit is 0 0.0167 only which is closer to zero and you know that's why uh, you know the astronomers before kepler and all thought that 
the orbits of all the planets is circular not elliptical Kepler had his lifetime observation and observation of his mentor as well and from that he derived he got to know that the orbits are elliptical not circular so that was first law let's move on to the kepler's second law kepler's second law is also called as law of equal areas let's see the statement so uh, the law says that a line joining the sun and a planet sweeps out equal areas in equal time let's try to understand that so if there is an ellipse and uh, the sun is here let's say the planet is here at a moment then it's here after t seconds then if it if the planet comes here it will be here in t1 seconds so what did you observe here let me show you so basically the kepler second law says that uh, the a line joining the planet and the sun sweeps out equal areas in equal time so at this position if a planet sweeps out a planet moves this much distance at this position closer to sun the planet will move more distance basically to cover equal area so here you know the area is less as you can see because it's long so this will be a1 and this will be a2 and as t1 is equal to t1 then a1 will be equal to a2 so that is basically it uh, so the, uh, the thing we derive from this law is a uh, planet moves faster when it is closer to sun and planet moves slower when it is uh, farther away from the sun so basically if the distance of the sun and uh, planet uh, decreases the velocity increases and if distance increases velocity decreases that is the essence of this law that's it so it's a, these laws are pretty simple to understand right they are the basic building blocks of astronomy so one more thing someone can ask you is this if this is the orbit and this is the sun the planet is here at some moment and then here it is here and then it is here right let me quickly draw these lines if someone says that area here is a1 in t1 here it is a2 in t2 and here it is a3 in t3 and if someone wants someone tells you to asks you to find the relation between all these parameters then it is basically a1 by t1 is equal to a2 by t2 is equal to a3 by t3 right so this is obvious right basically uh, what the kepler second law says is the aerial velocity which is a by t is constant at any point of time in the orbit right so even if someone asks you to find a3 or uh, a3 or t3 or any of these uh, you know uh, variables you can find out using this relation so that can be a problem in this law right so if someone gives you a problem based on this law it must be this only 99% of the times so that was kepler's second law let's move on to kepler's third law and the most used and most interesting law so it is also called as law of harmonies let's see the definition the statement again it says that the square of a planet's orbital period let's say t is proportional to the cube of semi major axis so i told you what is semi major axis right it's the half of the major axis of an ellipse so this one right uh of its orbit so it's basically t it says that t square is directly proportional to r cube where r is the semi major axis okay and t is the orbital period or else you can say that t square by r cube is equal to k now if someone gives you 
two planets wherein for the planet for planet one uh, the orbital period is t1 and its semi major axis is r1 and for planet two if it is t2 and r2 then you can relate relate them as t1 square by r1 cube is equal to t2 square by r2 cube right so that is really interesting right so let me show you some data actually so this is a uh, data of semi major axis of uh, the planets in our solar system and their uh, orbital periods this is collected from wolfram alpha's knowledge base now you can see the r cube by t square comparison it's almost almost constant 7.496 7.496 7.496 7.495 7.504, 7.498, 7.506, 7.504. These are really, really close, right? Now this uh, looks miraculous, right? Uh, so this have its own proof. If you want to check out, just search for the proof of Kepler's third law. I'm not going into the proof because it will make this video really, really long and boring, which I don't want to do, right? So as I said that Kepler's third law is uh, widely used in astronomy as well. Let, us, let me show you three important applications of third law. The first one is it, it was used in determining semi-major axis of Halley's Comet. Then it, it is also used in finding the most efficient route to Mars. And then it is also used to place synchronous satellites in its right orbit finding the distance uh, of the orbit to place synchronous geosynchronous satellites so like that there are a lot of applications uh, to kepler's third law which is also called law of harmonies and this is really interesting law actually it always mesmerizes me that how can t square and r cube the division of t square and r cube be a constant so astronomy is like that so hope you learned about these three laws and if you like the video give a thumbs up comment your opinion below so that we can improve our educational videos and subscribe to our channel thank you i'll see you in the next video